Okay, it's the Everything Guide to Sports Betting here on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Hope you're having a great day as we welcome you in. I'm Patrick, of course, Josh Applebaum, and we're going to bring the guy. I think this is the sharpest guy we have on the network when it comes to college football. It's Paul Stone. You can find Paul on Twitter at Paul Stone Sports. Now, Paul wrote an article about power ratings three weeks ago in Point Spread Weekly, which you can go sign up for free. You can find that. And I thought it was genius. Okay. And as we welcome in Paul, Paul, first off, thank you. And what we're trying to accomplish today and with the Everything Guide to Sports Betting is we're taking beginners and we're trying to tell them exactly what the, the, the game is about, right? So power ratings is something we get asked about all the time. I want to help destig like make it a little bit easier for a beginner to understand exactly what a power rating is. Why don't we start there, Paul? Okay, well, appreciate you guys having me on. First of all, uh, a power rating is a, in my mind, is a numerical value that you sign to a number of teams. So in college football, you've got 130 teams that participate at the FBS level. You have to determine, and I'm just going to kind of go with it unless you guys want to jump in. Oh, please. You have to determine the numerical scale that you're going to use for your power ratings. For me, I use a scale where the top team is going to be around 100 starting the year. The bottom of those 130 teams is going to be about 40 at the start of the year. So you have a uh, span there of 60 points, which is roughly uh, what the point spread would be uh, in a neutral site game between the best, the number one team of 130 teams, and the lowest of those teams. So last year I started Clemson, I believe, at 97 points. I started uh, UMass with a power rating of 36, and you kind of go from there. Paul, it's so great to have you on. Big fan of your work, and I think you're the perfect guy to really help new betters try to understand power ratings and then use them to your advantage. So uh, I just wanted to ask you just some some basic stuff. When did you start making power ratings? Uh, how much experience do you have? Obviously, uh, an incredibly vast amount here. But what are some criteria, stats? What do you lean on? What do you really look at to come up with these numbers? It's very subjective. I tell you, it is extremely subjective. You, you kind of have to – everybody's an experiment of one. But some of the things you determine – uh, you're going to, first of all, the, the first 30 teams are going to be pretty easy to identify. The same teams are good every year. The bottom 30 teams, the same teams are bad every year. As you might imagine, uh, the MAC, the uh, Sun Belt is going to be heavily uh, represented in the bottom 30, and then the usual suspects, the Clemsons, Ohio States, and so forth, will be in the top 30. It's the middle 70 that's, that's really difficult. But I start with that quarterback position. It's the most critical position on the field, whether you're talking about college, NFL, or high school. You look at coaching changes, certainly, returning starters, returning lettermen, uh, things like that. You, you read, you do extensive study, you use all the resources you, you can find, and then you start. Uh, the first thing that I would advise a person to do if they were making power ratings would be to rank the teams from 1 to 130. Uh, the middle 70, again, will be the toughest to identify. The first 30 are pretty easy. The last 30 pretty easy. I would then, once I get them in order, 1 to 130, Jeff Sagan's a guy that his power ratings are very accessible. He's been doing it a long time in a number of sports. I would use his final power ratings, say, from the end of 2019, just to get a sense of the numerical values that he places on teams at different intervals in your power rating structure. For instance, you might look at uh, positions divisible by 10. You might look at the 10th-ranked team as Texas. They've got a value of 82. And then you go down to the 20th-ranked team, UCF. They're at 74. And then 30th and 40th and so forth and so on to kind of get uh, an idea of what numerical values you will assign to teams at different intervals along the 130 teams in the FBS. When I did my preseason rankings last year, 62 teams, 48%, uh, they had a starting power rating between 65 and 50. So I had a pretty high concentration in that range. Also, a seven-point range, 69.5 to 62.5, I had 30 teams or 23% of the teams uh, in that range. So that just gives you an idea. Again, it's very subjective. Everybody's different. Uh, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. You're going to develop your own style. But that's kind of a starting point of how I would advise someone to get started in the art and science of developing power ratings. 
I think it's a great start for new betters there, Paul. And again, thank you so much for coming on the Everything Guide to Sports Betting. I just wanted to ask you, you know, uh, is it as simple as you come up with these power ratings for the opening week and you ride them all season long? Or how do you make adjustments? How do you know uh, whether to, you know, tick one team up, tick one team down? And then more importantly, you know, if a team overperforms their power rating, do you expect them to regress, you know, underperform, get back to the middle, kind of everything regresses to the mean? But can you just talk about how you maintain them throughout the year? Well, your preseason power ratings are really subjective. Once you start playing those games, now you've got data points. You've got information. Uh, You're going to fluctuate your power rating for each individual team based on those game outcomes and how the game is played out. I'm very conservative in most of my handicapping approaches, but in this particular area, I'm more aggressive probably than most people, meaning that a lot of people watch a game, let's say LSU's favored by six over Texas in Baton Rouge in week, uh, week two, and Texas wins the game by six points. How much do you move Texas? How much do you move LSU? You're usually going to move the winning team up by a margin and maybe the the team that doesn't perform as well against the spread down by the same amount of points. So you might move Texas up, their power rating up two points. Uh, you might reduce LSUs by two points in that particular uh, scenario. Um, I'm a, I, I will in, in some cases early in the year, I might adjust where some people want to adjust a team, maybe more than one to three points, even early in the year, week one or week two, I'll move a team as much as five or six points early in the year. You know, in some cases, a team has a uh, first-year starting quarterback who's never played, and uh, he's replacing a two-year starter who has 20, who had 25 career starts. And so you think the quarterback position is going to be a little bit below what it was last year, at least early in the season, and you have that factored into that power rating. But now you see the first game, and you see that this guy that's never played has mobility. You see that he can make plays off schedule with his feet that he doesn't look uh, like he's really under a lot of pressure in the pocket. He just calmly steps up. And you say, man, this team's better than I thought they were. I'm going to raise them, you know, by game's end. You've got them raised maybe four points. So don't be shy, especially early in the year, about moving the uh, power rating fairly dramatically because as good as I think my power ratings are, uh, they are based on, you know, a lot of subjectivity. And once you start getting information, in, in, in the way of game results and the way that the game flows, then you start having something really to go on a little more concrete. Paul Stone, you're the best. Remember, he went into great detail three weeks ago, Point Spread Weekly. Download it, read it. You're going to learn a ton. Thank you, Paul, at Paul Stone Sports on Twitter. We're coming back Thank as you, we Paul. continue the Everything Guide to Sports Betting right here on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. 